In this video, we are going to make a form with Google Apps scripts. Then, we will see how to save the data collected through the form in a MySQL database. First, create your MySQL database. In this tutorial we have chosen to use the free MySQL hosting.net website which offers free MySQL hosting. So to register click on start my free account. Then, enter a correct email address. Confirm this address and click on register. An email is sent to your inbox. Open this email and click on the link to complete your registration. A password is generated automatically. You have the choice to keep it or to modify it. Now click on Reset Password. Your registration is complete. All you have to do is enter your email and password to access your session. To complete the process, say where you are from and press Complete My Registration. Here, select where you would like your database located and press Save Location. Finally, Press Start New Database to create your database. In this example, the newly created database has the name SQL6432720. Wait a moment and you will receive the necessary information by email which will allow you to connect to your database. Click on this link to access PHP My Admin. Insert the connection parameters, then check the box I am not a robot, finally press Go. PHP My Admin will allow you to create, edit and remove tables and to backup and import your data. Now click on the database and create the user table. The number of columns in this table is 6. Next, we will define the columns and the type of data that will be contained in each column. Email is a primary key. Save. In this step, go to Google Drive. Then click on New, More, and choose Google Apps Script. Add an HTML file to your Apps Script project. Name this file Index. Within the HTML file, you can write most standard HTML, CSS, and client side JavaScript. The page will be served as HTML5. To write the code for the HTML form, we use the Bootstrap framework. It contains CSS and JavaScript based design templates for topography, forms, buttons, navigation, and other interface components. We start by adding styles to the form. Click Introduction. Scroll down. Then copy paste the stylesheet link into your head before all other stylesheets to load the CSS. Here is the form we are going to create. And this is the code. The form tag is used to create an HTML form for user input. Its ID is my form. The first two input fields allow the user to enter the first and last name. Use two radio buttons that allow a user to select their gender. We use the name gender in all options so that there are no multiple selections. To insert the date of birth of a user, use a date type input field. This type opens a date picker or digital wheels for the year, month, day when active in compatible browsers. Its name is date of birth. In the form there is also a field to enter the email. This email type text field has validation parameters and an appropriate keyboard to support browsers and devices with dynamic keyboards. We choose to put email as a name. The last input field is of type telephone A control for entering a telephone number. Displays a telephone keypad in some devices with dynamic keypads. The name is phone. Finally, here is the code for the submit button. You can find the code for this tutorial in the description. 
to create a web app with the HTML service, your code must include a doGet function that tells the script how to serve the page. The function must return an HTML output object. Once that basic framework is in place, all you have to do is save a version of your script, then deploy your script as a web app. Click Deploy. New Deployment. Next to Select Type, click Enable Deployment Types. Web App. Enter the information about your web app in the fields under Deployment Configuration. Click Deploy. Click this URL to test a web application deployment. This is the result. Now, create a new HTML file and name it JavaScript. In this file, we are going to write JavaScript code that will be included later in the index.html file. We are going to write a function called handle form submit. Google Script Run is an asynchronous client-side JavaScript API that we will use to call the server-side function process form once the submit button is clicked. Then, use the reset method to reset the values of all the elements on a form. Now, add the following line to the head section of the index.html file. This code calls the server-side function include and includes the JavaScript in the head section of the index.html file. Next, we are going to add two server-side functions to the code GS file. We start with the include function which allows you to import the content of the JavaScript HTML file into the index.html file. The second function called process form allows you to insert the data collected through the form into the MySQL database. Apps script can connect to external databases through the JDBC service. This service supports Google Cloud SQL MySQL. MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle databases. To update an external database with JDBC, your script must open a connection to the database and then make changes by sending SQL statements. First, open the email received from freemysqlhosting.net and copy the information that allows you to connect to your database. Then paste this information into codes GS and make the necessary modifications to declare them as variables. The JDBC get connection method attempts to establish a connection to the given database using a username and password. The database URL looks like this. In the process form function, declare the URL variable. Then Use the jdbc.getConnection method to create database connections. This method returns a JDBC connection object which will be assigned to a con variable. Next, we will write a single record to the database. To do this, use the prepareStatement method which creates a prepared statement object to send parameterized SQL statements to the database. The use of parameterized statements, in which the variables are indicated by a question mark, makes it possible to avoid SQL injections. Copy the name of the first input field found in the form. Then paste it here. Repeat the same for all inputs. Finally, execute the SQL statement with the execute method. Save. Then deploy. This code requires authorization. Click on the web application link to perform a first test. By clicking on the submit button, the data is saved in the MySQL database. But, you noticed that the form was redirected to the wrong URL. For this we need to add a function in the JavaScript file to prevent form submission. 
First, use the query selector all method. It returns all elements in the document that match one or more specified CSS selectors as a static node list object. Then, add an event listener to all returned items. The prevent default method cancels the event if it is cancelable, meaning that the default action that belongs to the event will not occur. Deploy again so that the changes will take effect. Let's test again. Click on Refresh. Here the record has been successfully added to the MySQL database.